Thank you, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. Um, so my name is Helen Murphy. I'm the Vendor Relations Manager for Box at Bytes. I just wanted to give you a very brief overview of Bytes and Box. So we are a premier partner, which is the highest level of partner status within Box, and this is based on our revenue and customer base. And what this means to our customers is that we can offer full support, working in conjunction with your dedicated Box account manager, um, from an initial WebEx through to a trial or proof of concept, up until purchase and implementation and of course after sales support as well. So we have a dedicated team at Bytes with great relationships across the business at Box and we were recently guests at the Box World Tour in San Francisco. Um, because of our unmatched level of support we can ensure that we provide our customers with the highest level of service at all times. So without further ado I will now pass over to Thomas who will run through his slides with you. Hi, good morning folks. Hopefully you, everybody can see my screen at this stage. Um, um, so what typically I would do uh, at the moment would be start off um, um, uh, a PowerPoint presentation. But because I'm using Box, I've actually uploaded my PowerPoint presentation directly into Box. So as you can see it here is a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. You can see where I up uploaded it this morning. Uh, I've got version 2 of it here. It's a 4.1 megabyte presentation. I can see there have already been four preview. So two people have previewed the documents and two people have actually downloaded it. Um, and because I have it in box, I can uh, simply preview it directly in line within the browser and that 4.1 megabyte doesn't have to be downloaded directly onto my desktop. And then I can uh, switch that into full screen and I can present directly from box. Um, so I've got a couple of slides this morning that I want to go through just to position box, uh, what we are doing within the industry today. Um, my name is Thomas Meridian. I'm a part of the sales engineering team here in the UK. Uh, and my job is to work with companies to help them understand and, um, where Box can fit inside their organizations, where they can uh, map some of their business processes, uh, where they can enable their employees both from a mobile perspective and also from a sharing uh, and collaborative uh, perspective. I work very much on the technology side, so helping customers understand the security, the implementation, how it would be integrated into their current uh, systems. So customers that have SharePoint, Microsoft Office, uh, Salesforce, etc., how Box would live alongside and integrate into those platforms. And so at Box, uh, we, we like to think that we're revolutioning how people are working with their content today. Uh, and there are a number of factors that, that are really kicking off this revolution within IT at the moment. And, and fundamentally, the key one is around the consumerization of technology that's happening. Uh, we have uh, users who are demanding a new way of working, a new way of sharing, and a new way of collaborating. And this has really been driven by the ease of use applications they're using in their everyday life. And so the apps they're used to on their mobile devices, the web apps they're, they're, they're used to, rich experience on browser-based interfaces, is driving this requirement into the office, into the business place, requiring the same level of interaction, the same level of governance, the same level of sharing and understanding the people I work with both internally and externally. Uh, users also expect to access these services basically on any device that they're choosing, access it from anywhere and at any time, and users expect to use the apps they're familiar with, to use the simple but logical apps in order to annotate, modify, update, um, or, or share information. Uh, and, and this way, this way of working is changing um, uh, in a lot of organizations. You'll probably be very familiar with the new generation of users that are coming into your company today, and those users are expecting something very different. They're all, they're all based on using these new devices, having more information available to them than ever before, and sharing freely both internally and externally. These users are being empowered and want to be empowered to share information and collaborate information based on the relationships they're having with their colleagues internally, but also their customers, their partners, their vendors that they're work, working with externally. They don't want these barriers to, to, to collaboration that are typically seen in today's legacy-based software applications that are installed and configured and managed with inside uh, corporate IT uh, firewalls. And so this sometimes gets uh, what's known as a divide be between what users want and what users expect and what the enterprise and the IT departments can actually deliver. And so what typically happens and what we see very uh, happen with inside organizations, a shadow IT um, starts to avoid. Uh, users 
a field that they are getting better um, served by consumer-based applications and consumer-based tools that are easily accessible from these mobile devices. So information starts to be placed outside of the control of co companies, outside of the control of IT. They start using very consumer-based type services to share, to collaborate, to have conversations, to have uh, internal discussions on a very external visible platform. And that's really where Box comes in. Box allows you to have this very ease of use, very intuitive, very consumerized, focused enterprise software platform, but gives organizations the full visibility of all of their users, how they're actually uh, interacting on the platform, how they're sharing, who they're collaborating with, and also all access to all visibility to all of the data. Exactly where is my data? who's got access to my data, and who's actually, where are they accessing that data from. So where does actually Box fit in here? And we're seeing uh, Box fit in in a number of different ways. Box is able to supply this, what's known as this next generation of uh, uh, collaboration platform. This allows customers to actually consume Box um, out uh, the vanilla UI, implement that into, into your service, or build custom-based applications directly on Box that interact with your current environment today. Being able to empower and embed Box into your mobile workforce, being able to access and share all of your content from anywhere on any device, but it also being able to integrate that with the apps that the users actually want to use. So for the PDF document, an AutoCAD document, an Office document, being able to have that document rendered and accessed by the applications of choice but having Box securely store and manage that content uh, centrally um, uh, for, for the user. And of course, best in class security. Everything we do is governance, it's controlled, it's reported, it's audited. Uh, we've got a number of compliance-based um, uh, certifications in, in place today, and we'll talk a little bit about security in a second as well. And so where are we seeing the typical use cases that companies are coming to Box for? And there are hundreds of different ways our customers are very creative in using Box and how are they embodying, uh, embedding Box into their everyday business processes, how they work today in, uh, internally, how they collaborate with their internal teams, how they reach out to their customers and their partners to collaborate and bring those customers into the business process. But four of the key ways we're seeing um, Box is to replace that legacy-based um, infrastructure they may have today. So those legacy-based applications, those FTP environments, those um, silo network file servers, where it's very difficult to share and collaborate. And we're seeing a much more modern, more user-friendly, and much more secure application box replacing many of these systems today. Uh, users are also wanting to have more of that enterprise mobility we've talked about before. This is a big use case of why companies come to box. They want to empower this mobile workforce. They want to have a bring-your-own-device strategy. The users decide whether they're going to bring an Android or iOS or BlackBerry or a Windows phone into the office but the organization can securely allow that user to access their content, but the IT department or the enterprise department can have full visibility over that content, regardless of the device it's been accessed from. But um, Box also allows organizations really to collaborate externally. So what we find is organizations have a big need. How do you bring in your customers? How do you become much, much more engaged with your customers? How do you get them involved in your business processes, get them feedback on proposals and engagements and contracts? And Box allows you to have that seamless interaction with your external users, but your, but your internal end users are empowered to share those permissions, share that content, share that folder, share those project workspaces based on the permissions uh, that are appropriate for that external collaboration. And of course, IT have full control of how those users can share and collaborate. And very finally is then building unique custom applications for, for your users whether it's a sales team that's on a road, a very unique custom um, I iOS or I a tablet or Android tablet device where you can access and visualize your content in front, of your, in front of your customers, or whether it's being able to access and integrate Box into your web-based application today. Box is a platform that fundamentally allows you to develop, develop and integrate those applications. Uh, so Box is very successful. We, we've been going for seven, eight years at the moment. We've been very much focused on the enterprise that entire time. Uh, we are, understand the consumer model. We understand the, the um, power of being intuitive and easy to use. Uh, uh, um, but we also make sure that we want to en enable companies that they can use our service very securely and can trust Box 
And today we have something like 180,000 organizations today using Box actively in their daily in their daily role, and we have something like 20 million users on our platform. And security is a big thing for us. On this very final slide, before I actually jump into a demo, a demonstration of some of the capabilities of Box, uh, we're very much focused on the enterprise. We're very much focused on compliance and, secure, uh, and security. So everything that happens in Box is fully encrypted. It's encrypted in transit, and everything's encrypted at rest within our service. Uh, we are ISO 27001 certified, both by Brightlight in the US, and we have also full certification uh, by the BSI here in the UK. And that's the ISO 27001 standard for the entire service, not just at, their, at our data center, but at that are a complete service and how we run and govern that service as well. Uh, we're EU uh, and US safe harbor. We're SSA 16, SOC 1 and SOC 2. Uh, we've just been recently announced that we're uh, on the G Cloud, and we've just recently got FIPS, which is the UK government security standard around encryption and governance of, of our data within our service. So as you can see, Box has really raised the bar extremely high for SaaS-based vendors, uh, and what we want to do is make customers confident um, that they, when they put their data in Box, it's secure, but it's also easily accessible by their end users. So let me just jump over now. Um, over to my screen. Um, so here I've logged into Box. Um, uh, a typical UI, this is out of, uh, out of the box uh, UI um, um, color uh, branding. Um, uh, box allows you to have level one type branding capabilities. So you can put your corporate colors, your corporate logos across the box and make it look and feel as if it's an application that's been delivered by your IT team. We also support single sign-on or full federated identity. So if you've got Active Directory or, or another LDAP type directory, you can securely authenticate your user on-premise, uh, and, and then we will provision the services that user is entitled to. So you can provide a really nice single sign-on uh, experience, and so your users don't have to have a separate username and password in order to access the box service. As you can see, it's a very clean UI. In this example, uh, I'm taking the, the case where I'm working within a legal department. So a number of folders have been provisioned to me, a knowledge base folder, a legal and contract folder, and the active cases that I'm currently working with. And I've also got my uh, personal folders. This is a personal folder area where I can create my own project folders, my own files, and share them uh, with the, my colleagues and customers that I want to share on a one-to-one -one basis. But I'm also working inside a more structured uh, group policy where I've been at, um, uh, um, a membership of a group, and that has given me access to these corporate-based um, project workspaces as well. As you can see from the UI, we want to make it very clean. This is one of the reasons we're so successful in very large organizations today. It's an intuitive uh, solution to use. Um, training is, a, is at a very minimal requirement, and users just natively understand what they need to do. Uh, so a blue folder simply means that I've shared that folder, or somebody either inside of my organization or externally has got access to that folder. And a yellow folder simply means that it's a private folder, so only I've got access to the top level of that folder, so I know that nobody else is collaborating or sharing directly inside of that folder. The folders with a small blue dot means that I have synchronized that folder onto my desktop. So we have true sync and share capabilities built into Box. So I can actually synchronize this folder onto my desktop, so any changes I make on my desktop are automatically replicated back into Box, and any changes I make in Box are automatically pushed or replicated directly onto my desktop. So it's a great offline capability. So if I'm working on projects for the next three or four hours, or I'm on a plane for the next 10 hours, I can simply replicate the projects that I'm working on offline, work with, them, uh, with my native applications. Any changes I make will be instantly replicated back into Box um, once I get an internet connection again. And this is a silent background process. It involves no interaction by the IT. Box simply maintains the sync between your desktop and the cloud um, for the selected folders you choose to sync. Uh, recently, Gartner and Forrester rated Box the leader in sync and share within the enterprise today. We've also made search uh, very, um, um, uh, very rich. Again, we see search not just in the searching and finding of information, but also the discovery of information that I may not know I've even got access to. So consider a situation where I join my, uh, an organization tomorrow morning, I get access to maybe the legal group, and I've got instant access to all of the content associated with the group. And that's available for me to search across all content that I own, plus content that I've got access to as well. So if I'm, working, if I'm searching for, for a specific type of document, I know the word contract, uh, and Box will try to figure out to me, based on a number of algorithms, 
what was I last accessing, what was last be shared with me, what have I last shared, and I'll try to match that up with the specific keywords. And this is what we call smart search. If I don't find what I'm looking for in the smart search, I can go and uh, do a full text index. So everything that we upload instantly is full text uh, indexed into, into box for what it can full text index. So office files, PDF files, text files, uh, presentations, Excel, anything where we can fill in text, uh, in text the document, we will fill text index that document and make that available for your users to search on. Uh, in this case, it's found 192 results. So again, that's a lot of documents and folders that I would need to navigate through in order to see if I can actually find the document I was looking for. But we've also placed additional filters here. So if I think what I was looking for was a document, for example, I vaguely remember uh, updating it in the last week, or I think an individual owns it or it's a particular size or, or if it's in a specific folder, I can add those uh, filters and apply those filters. And hopefully that will start narrowing uh, my results down from 192, in this case, down to two results. And here I can see the services contract that I was looking for. So it's a great way for users to find and discover content directly inside a box. If we take a scenario now, um, here I was in my legal folder, and I'm going to jump into my active cases. So because I have access to all of the active cases within this legal firm, I can see all the active projects, all the workspaces that are taking place at the moment. And the one I'm interested in here is this AVB insurance, um, which I'm currently working on. If I jump into this folder, then you'll see a number of subfolders. And one of these subfolders is called external customer sharing folder. This is where I want to bring in an external user into my organization to share information. So I'm going to give them access to this external customer sharing folder, but I'm going to lock that user inside that specific branch so only they've got access to that individual folder, and they will have no visibility of any other folders at the same level of it, of it and nor will they be aware where this folder sits inside a larger folder structure. So my user is coming, uh, my external user is locked inside this specific folder branch. Box works off what's known as a waterfall space permission. So if I add my user in at the external customer sharing folder, he will have access to that folder and any subfolders based at that level of permission, uh, but he'll not be able to navigate up the tree or anything at the same level of, of that specific folder. So how would I share that? Uh, I simply click on the share button. And the first thing that happens for me here is it creates, it creates for me this open URL link. Now this is a URL link that I can place in an instant message, on an email, on a public website, and anybody who gets access to this URL can will get access to the information. So let's give this a go. This is what we call non-disruptive sharing. This is the same as an email message, as attachment on a public website. Anybody who clicks on that information will get instant access to the information contained within that specific folder. So it's a great way to distribute information very quickly uh, without disrupting the, 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 the end user in this case. Of course, I can put additional security around this uh, URL link. So as an end user, I can customize that URL. I can set a unique password, for example. So I'll set a password for that. I can set that URL to expire, uh, perhaps expire after seven days, after 24 hours, after 30 days, for example. Or I even set a restriction to turn download off. That means that the user would be able to not download any of the contents in that folder. They would only be able to, the contents would be previewed natively within the browser. And our previewing technology supports over 100 different file types today natively previewed within our HTML5 preview technology. So now that I've set those conditions on the URL, let's just refresh that URL. And here you will see that I have now requested to enter a password. So 123 was the password in this case. And now I have no longer got access to download any content, but I can start previewing access in the content still because I'm coming in here as an, a non-authenticated user. Of course, what I can do is then set this to my company. So that means that users of my organization must be a, a managed user within Box. So my ID department must administer those users, and they must authenticate against my IDP, my Active Directory or my LDAP directory in order to get access to them to this information. So this is a DLP light, or data leak leakage prevention setting is built directly into the user's UI experience. I can lock this content inside of my organization and prevent this information from being leaked or accidentally shared for anybody outside of my organization. And of course I can place additional security even around my internal users within that I'm sharing with inside of my organization. Um, and of course, the third one here is collaborators only. This is where I want to invite somebody either internally or externally 
into this folder, but give them a higher level of access so they can collaborate with me inside this folder. So an editor or an uploader or somebody who's going to work with me inside this specific project. So all I need is the user's email address and Box will work out whether they're an existing user or if they're a new user to Box, we'll get them to sign up securely and set a secure username and password in order to access and identify themselves before accessing this specific folder. As an end user, I'm empowered then to set a level of permission based on how I want to work with that external user or even an internal user. Uh, what is my relationship and how do I want them to collaborate with inside this folder? So I can make them an editor, for example, a co-owner of the content, a viewer uploader so they can actually view the content, download the content and upload new content into the folder, preview uploader, they're prevented from downloading any of the existing content in the folder but can preview that content and of course contribute or add new content to the folder and then singular permissions around viewer access only, being able to download, preview access and then uploader access only where none of the content is visible but the user can only contribute contents to that specific folder, but they're not aware of any of the contents within that folder. From an IT perspective, everything I've shown in the last few minutes can be enabled and disabled as little as much as you feel comfortable from a security point of view. So for example, you can turn off this open URL link, you can even turn off some of the permissions, so prevent users assigning co-ownership to, to, to anybody outside of your organization, for example. If we follow this folder structure a little deeper, so if I, I click into external customer sharing folder, here is the contents within that folder, but on the right hand side you'll see exactly who's got access to the folder. So one of our security pillars is the UI itself, being very transparent to the end user exactly who's got access to your information and what level of access they have to that specific uh, information. So in this case, Ricky, you can see, uh, I can see he's got editor access and at any stage I can change Ricky's access to a uh, increase his level of access, decrease his level of access, or remove them altogether from that specific folder. Uh, looking at the contents of this folder here, you can see I have a, a, a number of rich media. I've got a PDF document and I've got a contract document plus a number of sub-documents. So when I invite my external user in, I give him editor access, so he's going to have editor access to all of this content and any of the subfolders within this specific branch as well. Uh, Box uh, provides a very rich uh, experience in order to preview. So if we look at some of this preview here, so if I click into this image, this is a four megabyte image of a, a construction building and again I can see this image plus I can also put some comments and assign tasks around this specific image. I can view other um, uh, files in that specific folder without the need to navigate back into the folder or I can even preview very rich media. So here's a 25 megabyte, um, uh, sorry, a 51 megabyte file uh, which I'm previewing natively directly inside of the browser. So again, I don't have to download that 51 megabyte attachment in order to preview the content. It's been delivered directly into my uh, into my browser. It's been streamed, and then um, so again, nothing saved locally on my hard drive for this use for this piece of content. Here I've got a services contract, so I might be working in, in this case uh, in the legal department in order to work with my external customer on the creation of this contract. So we're creating drafts of this contract. So here you can see we're on version 18. So again, I can see the life cycle of this document. Uh, the previous versions that were posted, who posted that previous version, and what date and time that was posted. Again, if there's any mistakes in the very latest version, I can revert back to a previous version and make that current, or review or download previous versions of that contract as well. So Box provides native file and document management capabilities as standard. Check in, check out, versioning, access control, and access stats all available for, for Box users. Again, I can see there have been 18 views or downloads. In this case, there have been 18 previews of the document and zero downloads of this document. I can see that there are a number of comments. So in line, I can see that a number of people have commented and assigned tasks. And again, I can assign tasks or even do the social app symbols to actually target information directly to users relating to this specific piece of content. And they will receive an email in their inbox that say, Thomas has either assigned a task to you or have a, a app message you with inside a specific piece of content. Um, they will get notified in their box, in their messaging windows, which is the top navigation bar that follows the user throughout the entire journey within Box UI. And here I can review the tasks that I've assigned to users and tasks that have been assigned to me, messages where I've been app messaged, and any message that I've sent to, us, to other users. 
and I gave, for example, tasks, and in this case, this is one, this is 41 days over, over due, and then I can remind this user of that specific task, for example. <clears throat> in this case, this is a service contract, so if I open the service contract, it is natively previewed in line within the browser because this is the first time I'm touching the contract. It creates a preview for me. Anybody who then uh, clicks on that preview from this point onwards will get instant access to that preview of this Microsoft Office document. Here I can see uh, on the side, uh, I can assign comments and I can even assign tasks based on, uh, based on the relativity. So this is having a social conversation around the content, content, uh, content or adding context to the content. I can download it directly from here as well, or I can even add, uh, look at the file property. So for example, if I want to see the access stat, I want to see exactly who either downloaded it or who previewed it, and what date and, uh, and time they actually download or preview that specific piece of information as well. Because I have access to the editor uh, button, I'm an editor here, uh, this edit button here is then available to me within the preview. And this then allows me to use the native applications installed on my desktop to edit this file type. Again, this could be an AutoCAD document, it could be a video file, it could be a PDF file, it could be an Excel spreadsheet, it could be a presentation document. Whatever it is, Box will find the native application installed on my desktop and use that application to allow me to edit and manipulate or update this specific file type. So let's give this a go. I'm going to click on Edit. The first thing Box says, do you want to check the document out? So we've got check in and check out capabilities there. And now Box is downloading this document onto my desktop it has found the associated application, in this case it's Microsoft Word, and then it allows me to actually edit this document. And here I'm just going to, I'll just paste in a few edits, and again use Microsoft Word, I'll just click on exit, Microsoft Word says do you want to save, again this could be an AutoCAD file, it could be any file type where you've got the application installed on your local desktop. I click on save, Box then detects that save to that file, it then grabs that file, uploads that back into Box, creates a new version of that file, uh, creates a brand new refresh of the preview uh, window, and then removes that file attachment from my local desktop. So what we have here is a single copy of the truth. Whoever's got access to the file is always uh, accessing the very latest version of this document, regardless of whether this document has been um, uh, edited on a mobile, edited on a browser, edited on a desktop. Box will manage this, um, uh, the content onto the user's desktop and then back into Box again. So again, if I was to go back into this document, um, click on uh, the services contract, um, here you see a, a new preview has now been generated, and then here is my edit up, uh, uploaded automatically for me. So from an end user, I didn't have to go through any steps to download that document, nor any steps to actually upload that document back into Box. Box done the secure round trip down to my desktop and back into Box again. So the next thing is I want to show you is then how do we take content like this and make this much more visible to your mobile users? Uh, how can they become much, much more productive when they're away from the office and working remotely? So I'm just going to fire up my iPad for you to, to see. So hopefully you can see my iPad at this stage. And again, what you have here is the Box app. And the Box app is available across the mobile um, um, ecosystem today. So we are, uh, we are, the Box app is natively available for iOS devices, Android devices, Windows 7 and 8 devices, and Blackberry devices, as well as accessible from other smartphone devices such as uh, Symbian, Nokia uh, devices as well. Uh, we're also on a number of MDM providers today. So if you've got good or mobile iron today, managing your, your mobile um, state within your organization, we have got dedicated apps on those specific uh, marketplaces as well. So very similar to you've seen before, here, here is my um, um, a folder structure you've seen a few moments ago, here I can navigate back, here's that project workspace, here's that external customer sharing folder I was looking at, uh, looking at a few moments, and here is that services contract we literally just updated a few moments ago. So Box then is now previewing that document directly inside of my iPad uh, available for me. Uh, let me just Make sure I'm on the Wi-Fi here. Uh, there is the document, and there is the edit I, 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 I did a few moments ago using Microsoft Word and Box manage that document. So that's great. Now I can preview that document in here. I can comment on that document. I can have this document off offline if I want to. But if I click on the small um, uh, cloud icon in the top right-hand corner, you'll see a list of applications that are associated with this file type. This is what we call 
the BOSS One Cloud ecosystem. Today we have over 850 mobile applications today that have integrations with BOSS. They're using BOSS as the content layer to their application and allowing BOSS to actually manage that content will they provide the expertise within their app. So for example, I can annotate this app using PDF Annotator, I can edit this using Smart Office 2, I can present this in a Cisco WebEx meeting. If this was an AutoCAD file, I can use it in AutoCAD or Gary Technologies. If this is a video, I can update it with Photoshop, for example, or something like that. Um, so whatever the app, whatever the file type you have within inside your specific industry, there's likely to be an app that has an integration directly with Box. In this case, this is a Microsoft Office document. And here I can use Smart Office 2 to actually edit this document. So by clicking on this, this box then sends this document over to the Smart Office 2 application and then allows me to actually use that application while I'm on the road or remote to actually edit that specific file type or annotate that file type. In this case, I'm going to edit. So I'm going to edit on a mobile. And then I click on uh, Save and it says, do you want to save your changes? I'm going to click on Yes. And using our API, that document then is pushed back into Box. It's uploaded as a brand new version, and the preview is updated, and then single copy of the truth again. Whoever's got access is always accessing the very latest version, regardless of how that document has been edited, whether it's been edited on a mobile, a tablet, or, or, or a desktop PC, for example. Users will always have access to the very latest version. Of course, I can add comments around this. I can share it directly from inside of, uh, inside of the mobile app as well to any specific users I want to give access to. In this case, I've also got a non-disclosure agreement. So this is a PDF document. As you can see, the PDF document is also previewed. Same principle as before. I'm using my OneCloud box to send to me. These are the applications I've installed on my local device that have a native integration with Box and that can manipulate or change that file type. In this case, I'm going to annotate it with PDF Expert. So again, open it in PDF Expert. Box will send that document directly over to PDF Expert. Let me just click it. Um, send over to PDF Expert allows me to preview that document in name. Of course, then I can make any preview or any changes. So in this case, I'm going to highlight that text because I can annotate this specific PDF document. I click on back um, and then uh, PDF Expert says, do you want to save this uh, changed PDF annotation back to box? I'm going to say save that back to box. In this case, I get a notification to say whether I want to upload this as a new version or whether I want to actually create this as a brand new file type with my new annotations to share uh, separately. For example, I'm just going to upload it as a brand new version. A box does then create a version 2 of this um, PDF with my specific annotations relevant, and then I can share that base to any of my users. I can start this so I can make it available offline so you can allow your users to have uh, their content stored locally on their mobile devices or you can restrict that altogether that users cannot share um, and, and cannot download their content onto their mobile devices. They only can work while they're online and you can even force a PIN on their local device as well. That means they must enter a unique PIN in order to get into the Box app. It's on the device. So we provide um, MDM-like capabilities if you haven't invested in a full MDM solution. And so that's Box. Uh, um, um, from, uh, from a features and functions capability. The next aspect I want to show is then how do you take Box and embed this into everyday applications or the center of the universe, I like to say, where users live today, whether they live in SharePoint, whether they live in Salesforce, whether they live in NetSuite, whether they live in Oracle or IBM solutions. Uh, you can actually embed the Box experience directly into those um, enterprise applications today. So in this case, what I've done here is I've actually embedded Box into a SharePoint team site. So again, you may have SharePoint either internally or in the cloud, and using a web part, you can actually embed a part of the Box experience, a specific document, a specific folder, or the entire Box UI for the end user directly inside of SharePoint. In this case, this is uh, uh, my full experience I've showed you before, and all the features and capabilities are available to me directly inside of SharePoint, but the content is all stored and managed directly inside of Box. Here's another team place that I created. In this case, what I'm only doing here is I'm only making available a specific folder um, a structure that only users can access when they're inside a box. So they can't navigate back into their personal box um, folders. This, only these folders are available directly inside of the SharePoint uh, team space. 
But again, the same capability to preview here is a marketing presentation, and that's instantly available to me directly within inside of Box. Uh, sorry, within inside of SharePoint. And again, I can preview all that using all the, the rich preview technologies. I can even do the social capabilities, uh, adding comments and assigning tasks directly inside of SharePoint in this case as well. I can even embed multiple levels of, of content. So in this case, there's another team space I've created. In this case, I've uh, embedded a, a specific team folder. I've embedded an upload control. So any attachments users try to add to SharePoint, these attachments can be uploaded directly to Box and then visualized directly within inside a Box. And I can even just make a specific piece of content visible within SharePoint. So maybe a PDF, maybe a video, maybe an office document, and use the preview technology then to actually preview that. So in this case, this is a video that I'm making available to my SharePoint users of the specific SharePoint page as well. Again, it isn't just SharePoint. In this case, here's where I'm at in Salesforce. I've embedded the entire um, box UI for, for myself inside of, of Share, uh, in Salesforce. So again, you don't have to have your users navigate into different browsers. You can embed the full box experience directly inside of web-based applications, or you can embed a box into specific objects, in this case, in Salesforce objects. Here, I've embedded um, a folder um, directly with this case details in Salesforce, and only I've got access to, to this information. I can't navigate to any other content inside of this specific record. But I can create unique custom folders in here even. So here's a custom folder I created so I can bring my customer directly into Salesforce, but my permissions are set and controlled by Box. Same as I did during the demo earlier, here I can set a level of permissions for my external user, whether I'm going to create an open link to this folder or whether I'm going to invite somebody in as a collaborator to this folder. Again, I can manage that directly from within Salesforce using the Box capability. And again, I can even embed this capabilities directly into public websites. So in this case, this is a political party who happened to be using Box. I'm certainly not using it as a reference in any case, but here you can see where they're, they're actually embedding uh, audio clips directly onto their public website. So people can actually play audio clips and it's streamed directly to the browser. In this case, this is an 18 megabyte um, audio clip. Again, the user doesn't need to download that. Box will play that and stream that directly to the user's browser. They're also embedding the um, uh, preview technology. So if I was to browse your website, click on documents, click on publications, here I want to see this specific publication. That then navigates to me into a new, uh, a new window, and that then is made available to me using the preview experience. So the full preview of that document is available to me. I can scan in and scan out, and as I scan in closer, you'll see the richness of the text in that PDF. We're losing no fidelity. It's perfectly crystal clear uh, within that specific uh, PDF, and they've given me even the rights to actually download this PDF um, from their public website, but I'll be downloading that directly from Box. So they're, they're, they're managing that directly from Box. Uh, one, last, uh, 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 one last thing I want to show before I hand this back to Sarah uh, and Helen for, for questions uh, is, is around uh, some of the security principles as well. So again, as a super admin, I get access to the admin console. Uh, and so here I've got a dashboard of capabilities where I can manage my users. Uh, I can have them pre-provisioned, for example, from Active Directory or, or an LDAP directory. I can set granular level of controls over my admins and my help desk and my security and compliance officers and set them rules and permissions of what they can actually in, do in Box. I can set governance and procedures within my enterprise settings so control exactly what users can do in Box, whether they can access those open URL links, for example, uh, whether they can assign certain levels of permission, whether content is expired, those open URL links expired, or collaborators that I um, uh, invite, whether they are removed after a set period of time, seven days, 14 days, 60 days, you're empowered to set that. You can restrict users from uh, inviting external people or creating their own project folders or own project rooms. You can set policies around trash, for example. So again, Box provides you with unlimited storage within Box, and one of our enterprise plans provides you with unlimited collaborators. And you can then use trash to actually prevent users from forcing removing, removing content from Box. You can set um, um, policies around security, password, session duration, even have unique terms of service for your external and your internal users collaborating in the Box. Uh, you can um, manage the mobile and how users access the mobile from which devices. We even support device pinning. 
that, that locks box onto specific devices. So if you have a bring your own device policy, uh, you can allow your users only to access their content on one specific device only, and that device might be a, a company provided iPad or, or a device like that. Uh, we've also MDM light capabilities, so again I can restrict access from downloading onto those mobile devices, I can even enforce a pin. And very finally, as I mentioned right at the top of the presentation, Box gives you full visibility of all of your users and all of your content. And so here I can run very detailed reports on usage log, file statistics, user statistics. I can do this over a specific date range. I can run this on a specific group, for example, or I can even run it on a specific action. There's over 60, 70 different actions that you can take place in Box. So for example, I could run a report to say, I want to see all files that were downloaded from my organization after uh, over a specific period of time. If I select nothing, Box will run a full report over the period I selected. And here you can see over the last few minutes, here's where I edited a document using Box for iPad. Here's where I used Box Edit to edit that services contract. Here is my name, the email address I was connecting from, the IP address, the date and time as well. And then I can start to drill down in this information. So I want to see all interactions with the services contract in that period of time. I want to see every time it was downloaded. So now I've created two tags associated with that, those actions. And now I then can export that and make that available to my security officer, or compliance officer, or whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, so hopefully that gives you a, a good over, a overview of some of the features and capabilities of Box, empowering your users to have a central repository where they can invite uh, their external users. They can set a level of permission, seven levels of permission, um, based on how they want to work both internally and externally. Uh, the UI is very intuitive, easy to use, uh, and, and because it's so intuitive, it becomes secure in nature because users are uh, the transparency of the UI delivers exactly who's got access to my content uh, and, and what level of access they've got, got access to my content. Plus, I can take my content anywhere. I can have it mobilized for me so I'm on the, low, uh, on the road working remotely, uh, working um, while offline. I've got access to all my content securely encrypted within the service and available to me in, in the devices and the UI that I want to work with. Um, so I'm going to hand this back to Sarah and Helen if we've got any questions. Hello, folks. Thank you, Thomas. Sorry, we're just um, unmuting. That was really great. Thank you. Um, so we'll do a quick Q&A session now. So if anyone has any questions, please feel free to type them into the box. Um, so we've got a, quite a few coming in already. Um, a couple from John Pepper. So firstly, is Box the same organization behind Dropbox? Uh, it's a very good question, though. We are completely separate. Um, um, both, both solutions do native sync and share. Uh, and, and similar to Dropbox, we have the sync and share capability. Uh, we are two very different organizations. Box actually predates um, Dropbox. Um, but where Dropbox has been very focused on the consumer user and sharing your photographs and your music with your family and friends, Box has always been very focused on the enterprise, on business. And as you can see from some of the capabilities I, I demonstrated, um, they're, they're very, and how you collaborate with internally and externally, how you do that securely, how you can track your users and fill visibility of your users, how we've integrated with your existing infrastructure, so whether it's Active Directory or LDAP or Tivoli, whether it's your Salesforce or SharePoint or Office environment today, uh, everything's encrypted at rest within our service. Uh, very high level um, sets of compliance and capabilities around um, managing of that data. Uh, we've got some very high profile customers within the UK, for example, Gatwick Airport, Network Rail, um, a GlaxoSmithKline, these customers are using Box to collaborate both internally and externally, uh, uh, and Box isn't just that, that lightweight consumer tool, it is a platform, and one of the applications that platform just happens to be a sync and share capability, but also allows you to um, use these mobile-based applications that are, have integrations with Box, plus also build your own applications where Box can be the content layer across all of your enterprise solutions, and access that content securely and singularly. And it comes back to the point I made, a single copy of the truth 
being able to be, have that document visualized on a mobile device, on a web browser, in SharePoint, in Salesforce, wherever you want to visualize that, but everybody's accessing that same one singular document. Great, thank you. And where is the data held? Can we prevent it from leaving the, U the EU? Yeah, so very good question. We, we, uh, we do get that a lot, as you would expect. Um, so there are three levels um, to our, uh, how we surface data today to our users. Um, our data centers are our data centers, uh, managed data centers, so we're not using a, a cloud-based infrastructure like Amazon uh, to actually deliver the service to the end user. They're our managed um, uh, service, um, um, so we have three data centers. So uh, two primary data centers uh, on the uh, east coast of the United States. Uh, they are live, uh, two live data centers, so they can run at 100% capacity of each other. So should we lose a data center, it instantly fall over to its sister data center. Should we have a geographical um, um, uh, disaster in that area, uh, we have a backup data center um, based in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. And that pro uh, pro uh, can also run at 100% capacity, and that provides a hot standby, which you can bring up instantaneously um, for, 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 for our users. We also have what's known as upload accelerators across the globe. So we have a number of those upload accelerators in Europe, in Asia, and South America. And that, that allows our, our European customers to upload content directly um, into the service, but using a local point of presence to do that. So again, very fast, fluid uh, connection to the service. And then on top of that, we're using a, um, um, a global distributed network, which, gives, uh, which we can take advantage of over 90,000 edge servers in over 90 countries. So that gives you a consistent, reliable connection no matter where on, on the planet uh, you're trying to connect to the box service. Uh, fundamentally, the data is sitting in the United States. Um, we don't have a UK or a European data center today. That is something we're evaluating. Um, uh, we have an active project team um, uh, working and considering where would be the best place to work and place the data center at. Uh, but we do work with our customers. Because of our very high level of security and our high level of governance and compliance, those are the typical discussions we like to have. And the majority of the cases, um, uh, customers are usually satisfied that um, box data sitting in the US is, is adequate for it. So if you look that we're now on the G Cloud, we have a number of um, uh, highly visible organizations across Europe. Uh, Snyder Electric, for example, in France, uh, they, are, they have 50,000 of their employees are now using Box to collaborate uh, both internally and externally today. Uh, Hounslow County Council in the UK are using 2,500 of their users. They are a, a UK um, uh, government, uh, uh, local government, and they are using Box to collaborate on a whole number of different uh, types of projects, from infrastructure projects around their county council to their healthcare workers to local how they manage internal services. Uh, and so again, they were able to procure Box through the UK G Cloud. And so Box is now uh, certified on, on G Cloud uh, for procurement for both central and local government. Great, thank you. And how does Box handle multiple users accessing the same document at the same time, or more than one user accessing offline and then uploading when back online? Yeah, great question. So we've got, uh, as I mentioned, uh, native file and document management capabilities. So it all comes around to that check-in, check-out. So I can take a document, upload that document, make it available to a number of different users, but when I'm working on it, I can actually check that document out. So make it read-only. So any of those users that have it synchronized onto their Windows desktop, or they try to access that document, that document then becomes read-only. When I check that document out, I can even set a flag to say, those users who currently have editor access become previewer only to that document. So while it's checked out and while I'm editing it, they can't even download the document. So I can force them just to be able to preview that document in line within the browser as well. So that's some of the settings. We also have a, a tool, um, and it's called Box Notes. Uh, we're bringing Box Notes to, to all, all of our customers early next year. And that's that online collaborative editing environment which allows you to create project notes, uh, project content and ideas and, asso uh, and associate that ideas with your specific uh, content and project workspaces. And that allows multiple users individually to be uh, contribute to that document in real time at the same time, collaborative editing. But to come back to the original question, it comes down to your, your, how you enable your users to train and associate with the users 
to lock and unlock that content when they're working on it. Great, thank you. And just another one from Phil. Will Box work on Windows XP PCs? Uh, absolutely. So um, we, we're trying to work across across the ecosystem. Uh, the ecosystem. Uh, of course, we very much strive to be within all the latest platforms and the latest browsers. But absolutely, um, um, we are we are still very much working within um, some of the traditional legacy type of operating systems. Today, we realize that a large number of customers have yet to upgrade, and yet boxes is still supported um, within um, XP. Some of the capabilities might be slightly limited, but there there is support for XP and, and the browsers on XP. And in case hopefully those customers will have a, a process to upgrade into later versions of of Windows in order to get the full rich capabilities that I've shown today. Lovely, thank you. And one from Michael, can IT set up restrictions so that a user or a group of users can use Box but they are unable to allow downloads from the Box account? Also, what auditing capabilities are there so IT can see what users have been sharing and who with? Big Brother. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So hopefully I showed you some of that just in the admin control again. Typically, I could spend two or three hours just presenting around the admin control, and this is one of the areas where we really excel over the competition. Certainly, excel over some of those consumer type uh, think and share tools. Uh, this is where uh, Forrester and Gartner and IDC have rated Box the leader in this space. It is around the governance and control of admin have over the Box and their users and the content within Box. Uh, and absolutely, so you can set a Box that that your users um, uh, you, you can provision specific workspace folders to their users and you can set the permissions on those folders so users can only get a certain level of capabilities. You can prevent those users from being able to share those open links or share or invite collaborators so they're locked down with inside the specific folders that you assign, assign them to. And certainly we have a lot of customers who do that, particularly in very highly regulated industries that are using Box. So considering the pharmaceutical, well, large number of pharmaceutical companies using Box, with a large number of legal firms using Box, they're using Box in a virtual deal room scenario for mergers and acquisitions and contracts and negotiations. And those particular type of settings that Michael have asked for are, are very important in those specific use cases, and Box supports each one of those use cases as well. Um, on top of that, our reporting capability is very granular. It gives you full visibility of all of your users and all of your content. So if you have the appropriate rights as an admin, you can actually have full visibility of all the content. So you can make corrective action, but everything you even do as an admin is, is, full, is, is fully recorded and reported as well. So again, absolutely, you can drill down to see which files were shared externally, which domains were they shared with, um, uh, who accessed that data, what IP address did they come from to access that data? What service did they access that data with? Was it an iPad? Uh, was it an app on an iPad? Was it a, a browser-based service to access that data? And then you can run reports based on that as well. And so that's in the reporting, uh, reporting UI that I showed just towards the end. But we've also got a real-time reporting API. So you can plug directly into Box. So if you've got um, uh, an, an analytical tool, maybe something like Cognos or even Splunk, where you can actually then, at a real-time level, see exactly what users are doing, what domains are sharing with, what level of access, how many files are actually got external access. So all of that is available through your reporting API as well. Thank you, Thomas. And um, just a couple from Steve. So one, could you provide a brief diagram of infrastructure requirements, DMZ placement, etc.? Um, I think uh, Steve, we can we can get that back to you after the webinar. Absolutely. So I, I will share some, uh, our security white paper with you, Sarah, and then you can make that available to to the folks on the call. Lovely. Thank you. And um, just another one from Steve. Is there not internal box application? So all data stored on a local network? Yeah. This is a completely 100% cloud-based solution. So nothing is stored locally. Um, so users access it all over a public. Um, uh, public internet c connection. This is public cloud solutions, so we don't have a local uh, um, uh, install version of Box that you can place on your network. Um, there are a number of ways where you can start locking down Box. Um, similar to the, the answer I just gave to the previous uh, question, but again, if you've got Active Directory or ADFS and, and, and profiles around Active Directory, then you can prevent certain users from accessing Box from inside or outside of your, your network. 
So uh, based on our SSO grip for active SSO grips for Active Directory, we can support certain users authenticating the box from specific subnet maps, and that's usually controlled by your, your, your AD environment. So if some customers have set up box with those unique configuration scenarios. Great, thank you. And one from Cebu, what would be the encryption strength, please? Yeah, so we have uh, 256 AES encryption. It's encryption at rest and encryption in transit. Uh, we, it's actually key file level encryption. So what that means, uh, I'll, I'll keep it very simple, it means that every individual file that is uploaded into Box is encrypted with its own unique encryption key at 256-bit AES encryption. That individual encryption key is then held remotely from the data in, in a, uh, uh, or a key encryption store, and it's like that key is then encrypted with the overall box propriety encryption key, and we then rotate that encryption key on regular intervals. Um, so um, again, it's a multi-layered threaded encryption model. So again, even if you were able to get access to specific servers and grab those servers, there is no way you'd be able to do anything on data. You'd have to go and find the encryption key store, and then you'd have to find the, our box overall encryption key store, and then match up all of those identities. And then you have to figure out how to put that file together, because we, we also do shredding of the, of, of the individual file, and the file is shredded among different servers within our infrastructure. Um, so that gives a very deep level of, of security and control uh, within the environment. But again, uh, uh, we can send some information around our security white paper that can give some more detailed information if that's of interest. Perfect, thank you. And do you have any public healthcare clients? Yeah, so, so we are in, uh, in, the, um, in the US. Uh, we do have HIPAA and high tech certification, uh, and that allows us to store uh, medical and health records and patient information for US, um, uh, US citizens. Uh, we are now working with a number of agencies and central government agencies in the UK in order to see where we can, uh, we can move down and help the UK authorities and UK, uh, European authorities. We do have a very large uh, UK health insurer using Box for their very senior management and executive teams um, within that organization. So those are conversations we currently have uh, now that we're on the G Cloud. Great, thank you. Um, what sort of internet bandwidth would you recommend for using Box from a corporate environment with approximately 1,000 users, for example? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, unfortunately, it's, it's like a piece of string. It's really hard to, to say. Um, a couple of things is really around your concurrency rate for, for, for your users, typically how many users would be on um, the system at any one time. Box really, when you look at the type of data we store in Box, we store very large files. Each individual file can be over, uh, can be up to five gigabytes in size. We provide unlimited storage, so that for some customers can be a, a bit of a concern. But in reality, what happens is that a lot of that data is being consumed by our preview engine. So, for example, you notice right at the beginning of this call, I had a four megabyte presentation in PowerPoint, and I uploaded that presentation to PowerPoint. Everybody in my office who would access that presentation is not pulling down four megabytes to have that previewed on their desktop. They're pulling down a, a small uh, number of kilobytes in order for that to be presented within the browser experience. And that really helps to reduce the overall burden that, that typically organization, organizations that have today when those presentations might actually be shared on, on network file servers or in SharePoint where the document is not being previewed. They're going to have a higher consumption, network consumption of that file say. But unfortunately, it is like a piece of string. We'd have to see the different types of use cases, the, uh, with different teams, how they collaborate with internally and externally today. But again, Box is not very, um, uh, isn't, isn't highly um, impacted on the network. But again, maybe if you're in very um, um, media companies, uh, the national broadcaster, for example, in the UK, Again, no guess as who that might be. Uh, they've got something like three or four thousand users today using Box to share very large TV episodes, very large graphical design, very large media files. And again, um, it hasn't really posed a big issue, big issue for them. So we'd have to look at the type of use cases, the type of users, and the type of data they're actually collaborating with. But if it's typically office type documents, PDF type documents, then um, um, we could size that um, pretty well for that customer. 
Okay, lovely. And one from Tim. I see that Box is Safe Harbor compliant, which is good. How long after an object is erased will all the backup copies be removed? Yeah, very good question. So a couple of things there. This is really number one down to how the admin sets up their trash. So because Box provides you with unlimited storage, you can actually place Box your trash folder as a compliance-based whole folder. So if users try to delete data or forcefully remove data from, from Box, it's held in the compliance folder that only the admin, and even you can restrict the admin from deleting from that trash folder as well. However, should you not set, set those settings and you have the default settings, which is 30 days, um, that is 30 days um, 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 the data will then be purged from trash. Box then has that in, in our backup within the service for an additional 30 days. That means that if something was removed, you can actually raise a support ticket, and then we can try to recover that within that specific period of time. So that's 60 days. We also back up the entire service encrypted without the encryption keys to a cloud-based um, 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 solution, so that's separate from the three data centers. And in that case, that, that update would happen, uh, uh, um, would, would uh, potentially, that file would be stored up there for 30 days. So in total, uh, depending on the default settings, it's possibly up to 90 days a file would be uh, would be visible in the environment. Great, but thank again, you. Again, I, I can, if that's a specific question, I can send further details around that if, if you want to to, to um, get that uh, gentleman's name and we can certainly provide much more granular level of detail of how that process works. Sure, okay, and I think um, that may have answered Frank's question as well. What recovery options are there if data is deleted in error? Yeah, absolutely. So it comes around to that trash folder. Uh, default is 30 days, and then uh, users can obviously delete that stuff, uh, delete directly from trash, or uh, trash will be purged after 30 days. But uh, as an admin, as I mentioned, you can then prevent users from deleting anything from trash, and then you can prevent trash from ever being purged, or raise the purge period up to 180 days or 360 days, for example. And so it means you have a longer period where you can recover data, but obviously Box gives you unlimited storage so some of our customers just never have anything purged from Box, and then Box becomes a compliance-based whole folder for two years, seven years, whatever the period of contractual you may have for, as an obligation for the industry you're in. Lovely. Thank you. And one from Isaac. Are there any pre-built templates, models for using Box as a deal room? Absolutely. So we have a white paper today. If you go up to success.box.com, uh, we have a white paper on how customers can configure Box to be a virtual deal room. Uh, and so we have a number of customers that ha are using Box in that very scenario. So they have unique instances of Box where they bring in their external person um, and their internal uh, legal teams. Uh, and again, based on the, the, the t uh, a typical VDR scenario, you can turn on real-time notifications. You can hide collaborators from each other. Uh, so that means that people are working on a contract document, but they're not. But you're not visible to anybody else in the platform. So a lot of the a lot of the VDR requirements are 100% satisfied with Box. And again, we can make that white paper available to you. Um, or if you go to success.box.com, you will see a, a number of white papers there. Box for a number of verticals from legal, construction, sales. Um, media, whatever it might be, and it helps you to visualize how Box could be used in a vertical that you might sit in today. Wonderful, thank you. And just lastly from Sabu, do you have any plans of a data center in the UK? Yeah, I, I think I get this question almost daily. Um, uh, so today um, we, we have no committed plan where we have publicly stated we are placing a data center in the UK or in Europe. However, I will say that we do have an active team engaged, a project team with a project manager engaged about how can we um, um, place the data center in Europe, what that would look like, what architectural changes we would need to make that happen, and, uh, and where it would make most sense for Box to do that. Um, and so that's a process we're working on. So should we do something, I would, I would think that we would probably have a data center within 12 to 16 months, but that is not a confirmation that Box will place a data center in Europe. Certainly from the customers we're speaking to, um, data center is always the first question, but once we start talking to them about our security or compliance, uh, we do uh, quarterly penetration tests by independent um, uh, external bodies, and we rotate them on a quarterly basis, 
uh, we can make those reports available to you, make those findings available to you. Um, and a lot of that, a lot of our security conversations or compliance in those reports that we make available, at most cases, satisfies those customers to a degree that they say Box can be used for a number of classifications of their data. Uh, we have a lot of customers who have also certified Box at their very highest level of classification. So we have a number of European pharmaceutical companies who are insisting Box only be used for their highest level of um, uh, data classification because they have absolute confidence in the box and the box service. But those are discussions we would love to have with customers to understand what their requirements are, what their concerns are, and how we can best um, satisfy them. Great. Thank you, Thomas. Um, so I don't think there's any more questions. So I think it's time that we, we wrap this up. Thanks again, Thomas, and thank you, everyone, for joining. We will send you a copy of the webinar recording so that you can listen again and forward to anyone that would be in, of interest. So thanks, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, thank you, everyone. Bye.